Arsenyi Yatsenyuk was Prime Minister of Ukraine till 2014. He was booted out after the so-called Maidan Revolution. Then he led the opposition and argued for a more pro-European direction for Ukraine. And then, of course, Russia intervened. They annexed Crimea. They're still fighting between Ukrainian forces and pro-Russian forces in the eastern part of the country. And on the line now is Mr. Yatsenyuk. Good morning to you. Morning, sir. What is your concern um, about relations between Washington and Moscow specifically? Frankly speaking, I am more concerned about the new global architecture that could emerge. So this is of crucial importance for the United States and for the United Kingdom because you have quite good relations uh, uh, between DC and London to lead the free world. Uh, the biggest threat I see is that someone will try to cut the deal behind the scene and uh, this deal could include Ukrainian case too. But frankly speaking, uh, the signals we received uh, in the last few months are quite positive. Look, Vice President Pence in Munich, he was very tough and clear over the Ukrainian case. And uh, he, the United States, in his words, are committed to support Ukraine. And uh, no one is even thinking to leave sanctions uh, uh, that were imposed uh, against Russia after Russia illegally annexed Crimea and sent its military to Donetsk and Lugansk. The same goes with General Mattis, uh, a U.S. envoy uh, to the United Nations, uh, Rex Tillerson. So it seems that the administration is on the same page. Uh, but in any case, it's important uh, where the President Trump stands. Uh, I do believe that after his last tweet, when he acknowledged and recognized that Crimea was illegally annexed by the Russian Federation, things will improve. And your relations with the European Union, because clearly many people believe that the reason Russia intervened, one of the reasons Russia intervened, uh, was that you had grown too close to the European Union. Ultimately, you, you might want to become a member of the European Union. And so you, and therefore you were regarded as the enemy on their flank, as it were. You're absolutely right. Look, we paid a huge political, not political price, we pay, paid a huge price for our sovereign decision uh, to become closer to the European Union. The ultimate goal of the Ukrainian people is to, to get the membership uh, in the European Union. The ultimate goal of the Russian Federation is to draw the new lines after the Second World War, to restore the spheres of influence and to intimidate uh, both the European Union and uh, NATO ally member countries. Uh, so we are fighting for our independence and we are fighting for our choice uh, to be a really a European state. But you can see the concern, can't you, of many people in Russia. And, and, and uh, President Putin has the support of the vast majority of the Russian people in this, doesn't he? That they feel threatened. They, they feel NATO has been positively aggressive in its attitude towards the Russian Federation. But, you know, facts are different. It was Russia who invaded Georgia in 2008. It was Russia, and it is Russia, who illegally annexed Crimea. This is Russia, who sent their troops to Donetsk and Lugansk. This is Russia, who committed an international crime in Syria, mainly in Aleppo. So Russia is a hostile country, and Russia posed the threat to the free world and to... To, to the global order. This is Russia who is constantly violating the UN Charter and international law. How is Ukraine holding out uh, against your forces holding out in the east of the country as we speak? Uh, you know, there is a so-called Minsk deal. Under the Minsk deal, uh, Russian Federation had to impose the ceasefire practically two years ago. It's, it's not in place right now. So there is an ongoing and constant shellings from the territory which is held by Russian proxies and Russian military. Because I want to be very clear that Russian regular forces are deployed on the Ukrainian soil. Uh, so they, there are an ongoing shelling of Ukrainian military and uh, Ukrainian civilians. And every single day the death toll is rising. Uh, but Ukrainian military is practically the only military that deterred Russian troops uh, for practically three years. Arseniy Yatsenyuk, many thanks.